Hey guys, it's Lemming Rush. Today we're going to be taking a look at another replay that was featured on Quickie Baby's channel. This is from Original Easy. He is in my clan, Maho, or he was. He's joined Otter, but uh, that's beside the point. So he's on the map Stalingrad TVP. Now I'm going to talk about why what he does works uh, to try to make it possible for you to like replicate this type of game. Even though he got lucky like tons and tons of times, I'm going to try to like tell you what he did was good so you can try it and see if it works for yourself. Now I'm going to pause the replay here where he's driving into position. Um, when you start a game, you want to try to figure out where your team is going to go and where they're going to go. That's going to let you sort of formulate a battle plan. Uh, and it'll oftentimes it'll prepare you for what's going to happen. So if you take a look at the lineups, like you can just look at the tanks that they have. Our team or his team, I guess it's his replay, is very, very lightly armored, right? Like they've got a ton of mediums, they've got a ton of TDs, not many heavies. Heavies love to play the two, two line, mediums love to play the eight line. So you can expect based on the lineup for his whole team to go eight line. And if you take a look at his team or the, sorry, the enemy team, it's very likely that all their heavies are going to be on the three line. So you can see he's got two heavies. The two heavies are probably going to run into like six other heavies. And, uh, you know, you, you don't have to be Erwin Rommel to figure out he's going to lose the two lines. So it's really simple, just predicting the lineups and whatnot. Uh, and you can sort of make very good decisions based off that. He shoots the PTA's Amorak twice, just so you guys know it's on the left-hand side. Generally, you'll hit it if you shoot the... Uh, left hand drive wheel from the leopard's perspective so if you're shooting at it shoot on the right hand side to hammer it so um yeah obviously that works if you're in a leopard don't show the, the that side of your tank but whatever there's a t62a here the 62a doesn't rush him you can see he's willing to take two hits right here generally the 62a will be able to put two shots into him i mean that's okay it was a good trade <laughs> uh he's lucky he didn't get shot twice but realistically he finished the game with 370 hit points so it doesn't really matter but you're gonna see what he's doing right here is he's just reloading as I predicted, I mean, obviously I've watched the replay, right? So hindsight's twenty twenty. But given given their lineup, you can very logically predict that they're going to be winning the two line. You can see they've got like eight tanks over there, uh, and it's effectively it's like a three v eight. So they're going to win that side. What he needs to do is he needs to push his side of the map before they get on his cap. You can see. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to have access to the cap circle very soon. So what he wants to do from this perspective and what you'd want to do if you're trying to uh, win a game where your whole team goes to one side, you need to push that side. You need to like kill in this guy's perspective. You need to kill the low, the grill, the M03 and the T49, because if you're going back to base and whatnot, while you're trying to carry, you don't want people surrounding you. So what you can see is happening is he's clipping out a low. This is the pushing side. I'm trying to look at this from like a, a strategical perspective. He wants to be pushing this side. You can see when he crosses, there's a huge risk that TDs back here, like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying I would be doing this, but there's generally going to be like some guy who's just camping right here waiting for you to cross. Um, he did a really good job of using these buildings for cover. When you try to like push the low like he did, you want to cross quickly. That's going to make it nearly impossible for camping TDs at G3 to hit you. Now, obviously they're pushing into his base. I mean, that's something you could very easily predict. He's going to kill the grill and then he's going to go back to his base to defend the cap. That's a smart play right here. With 300 hit points, it's it wouldn't be good for him to push back, especially when the, uh, sorry, with 300 hit points, it doesn't make sense for him to push into their base and get on cap, um, especially when his whole team's trying to defend the base. So this is something you need to realize, like um, you, you have to play to your team. If your whole team is in your base, it doesn't make sense to go try pushing through. Like I'll, I'll use the 50B as an example, not to talk shit, but he's pushing through, right? Like what is he gonna find right there? There's the, the he might find like a 50, I mean, the 57 heavy's lit, but it doesn't make sense to push through if you're alone, especially if you're an autoloader and you need support of your team. So you can see the both autoloaders are making the smart play. They're going with their team. They're going back to defend the base. This works because when you're in a support tank, uh, generally you need people to be taking hits for you and you can see he's going with his team so they will be able to take hits for him. Now he's get behind the 57 heavy, he's just going to clip him out. I think he should have just focused down the 57 heavy but you know that's nitpicking so um, you know just my opinion. Typically what you'll find even in like this is a, a big deal in Clan Wars but even in a public game you always want to be shooting the lowest HP or like the biggest threat. So probably the 57 heavy would be a better target, but again, this is nitpicking, it's just advice that, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm able to give. Here's the T49, he's gonna finish him off, 
and now he's going to be, uh, you know, working on resetting. Now, he got a bit lucky. His team was able to reset the cap, which is really, really strong. It buys him some extra time. He's going to be able to clip out the type 4. It's good that he took the initiative here because a lot of times you can't rely on your team to consistently get resets. But you can see uh, he didn't get the resets. Someone else did. So it works out. But I think it was a good play to work on you know, saving the game, that that can be important sometimes. Alrighty, so here he's in an interesting position. Obviously, the enemy team has a lot of one-shots. If you're in a situation like this, you'd want to prioritize the one-shots so you have easy, uh, you know, you have so you have less guns firing back at you. That being said, an RHM comes behind him. Now, I want to talk about something. This, I think, is pure luck because uh, I don't have XVM, as you can see, but he's poking onto a full HP RHM, and he's a one-shot. <laughs> And, and the RHM misses, I don't understand, but you can see the, the RHM misses, he's able to clip him out, and while he kills the RHM, uh, two other tanks get killed. So basically they just kill three tanks on the enemy's side, he wants to reload right now, he's got a lot of time to deal with what they have, but um, you'll notice the time is quickly diminishing, there's a full HP T-34 coming behind him. Uh, and you can see that that's like just because it's a T-34, it's got a lot of HP to deal with. So it's actually a threat right now. Now, in this case, it's really, really strong to isolate tanks. So even though this guy isn't low HP, he's found a Type 4 Heavy that's what's called isolated. He's not, uh, he's alone, right? So he can very easily just clip out the entirety of that Type 4 Heavy. That's going to make him an easy kill for the clicker. Um, and now he's obviously got to reload. Now this is a really, really difficult situation to put yourself in. There's almost no right way. What I would be thinking about is not playing on this corner. I would try to get around to the other side of the map or whatever. But in this case, originally he does a really good job of making it work. Now you can see the M103 is chasing him probably and the uh, M53 killed the Type 4 Heavy. And so that puts him, the, him in a really interesting position. I would sort of expect the T-34 to be maybe driving you know, towards B8 or whatever, you can see the IS-4 is at D6, uh, and he just got lit, which is really interesting. He pokes on the M103, the M103 doesn't shoot him again, which is really awkward. Like, <laughs> I don't understand, but it is what it is, I guess, and now he's bought, got himself a 2v1. So, um, yeah, typically when you're in an autoloader, like, people have been asking me to talk about carry situations and how to make them work, a lot of it is about creativity and using the map that's open to you. So the IS-4 is here. I would be thinking that the T-34 is going to be on the B line. You can see original easy sort of does that. He looks to his right though. Um, the <laughs> it, It's logical because he doesn't spot the T-34, but I don't understand how he predicted that the T-34 is going to be there. Um, it is what it is, I guess. You can see the T-34 misses his shot. Again, I think that's really lucky. Uh, I don't, it's not like great play by the TVP's part. I think he just, just got lucky there. So, but that's my opinion. Right now you can expect the IS-4 to be flanking. Typically a lot of people like to flank. Um, so that's just one of those things. If someone is pressuring you from one side, pubbies, like the average player, a lot of the time will just try to flank. So I think it was a, it was an okay play to go here. It sort of didn't work out for him. The IS-4 is obviously rushing towards him, but you can see right here he gets lucky again and the IS-4 doesn't shoot him. He also tracks the IS-4. So this is something, uh, apart from all the luck that just happened, he does something really, really good right here. And that is, uh, what is, how do I say it? Pushing away. So I was talking about isolations earlier and how you want to deal with 1v1s. If he were to try to clip out this IS-4 right here, he'd leave the IS-4 on a one-shot. So in this case, by pushing towards the T-34, he's able to kill this guy super, super easily. I mean, that guy's alone. I mean, that shot, I mean, I don't think it was as lucky as, as some of his other plays, but the T-34 didn't kill him. The already hits the IS-4. And uh, you can see him pushing into the T-34 was really, really strong because the IS-4 wasn't able to shoot him. So he dealt with, he turned that into a, a 2v1, into a one-on-one, -on -one, and then he was able to win two one-on-ones successfully. So that's the type of thing that takes timing. It takes a lot of practice to like do it immediately, obviously, because it's sort of hard when you've got uh, a 10k damage game on the line to like think clearly. But um, it's it's really important. If you've ever played Clan Wars or any like anything like that, you'll notice the caller will always, I mean, in high-end Clan Wars, the caller will always talk about isolation. Um, and and pushing their weaker side because if there's one tank 
uh, or, you know, I guess in Clan Wars, if there's three tanks and you've got six, it's super strong to just push those three tanks and get three kills for uh, basically free. So that's what he did in this situation. It's very applicable. It's something I think you should apply to your uh, daily game. Uh, and you can see he even did that on the 8-9 line. I guess we'll speed it up. We can watch him kill the clicker, but uh, <laughs> he's killing a clicker. It's not really difficult. All right, so that's the game. I'll go take a look at the map tactic, go over some strategy again, just try to make everything a bit more clear. And uh, that'll be the video. Oh, I thought I was streaming. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay, so what happened on this ray is he was able to push the 890. Now, like I said, the reason this worked is because his team was very, very strong on the 890. I've got a replay on steps where 15 players go to a single side on the map and we end up winning. And that's because 15 tanks, or I guess in this case, like he had 10 or whatever, are extremely strong. What you need to do if you've got a team that just goes all to one side is you need to push it. You'll notice he didn't rush the push. He he played it off of what he saw on the map. So when they started to get on his cap, that's when he needs to start going like back to base and whatnot. But in this case, because they weren't like yoloing down the, the B line, he was able to take his time. He didn't have to like rush and kill himself to push this side. He did it uh, with the time that the enemy team gave him. So what he did is he pushed down the 890. That pretty much cleared up his flank. Obviously, he didn't end up killing the T-34, but uh, I mean, when, when there's maybe one or two tanks that are super slow way back here doing nothing, uh, it, it's sometimes a better play to go back to base. You can see that's what he did. He was able to get resets and clip a couple of people out right here. I would say the takeaway from this replay is, well, there's a couple of things. He did a lot really well. I think pushing this side is extremely strong. Um, I think if he hadn't have done that, there's no way he would have won because there would have been a grill farming his ass. Uh, and then the second play is deciding not to push through and get on cab. You can see his his the majority of his team back here were, were back here defending the base. So you really have to play to your team because a lot of times puppies, like the average player, isn't going to play to you. Like they won't realize that you're trying to put three on cap Um because all they're thinking about right now is defending the base, right? A lot of people don't have the situational awareness to like think of all the options. They just see, oh, there's five tanks driving into our base. We we need to go back. So in this case, when when all their players had gone back, it was really smart for for the TVP and the 50B to follow them. That allowed them to get resets, um, and it basically allowed them to kill all the tanks right here while there was you know a T34 and a couple tanks that just weren't doing anything so I think that's really smart I think his play clipping out the type 4 uh, was really smart he could have really clipped out anyone else but the type 4 heavy was in a really strong position so it worked out perfectly um, and then I mean a lot of this was <laughs> this play over here was luck but I think the takeaway from from how he played it is when there's an IS-4 right here or where I don't know if this is the exact house but I think it is when there's an IS-4 right here and there's a tank on the other side you want to push the tank that you can kill the easiest because obviously when there's a building in between you and the IS-4, the IS-4 can't do anything. So his his play to push around like this and to kill the T-34 is what like secured the game. That's such an important thing that people don't realize. It's like you can just push into people if you're in a crossfire, right? So you can push out of those crossfires and you can definitely make it work. So turning things into a one-on-one -on -one is, is really strong. One more thing I wanted to talk about when you're pushing on this side of the map I can increase the size of this actually. Um, there's often going to be TDs camping down this line. It's one of those things that's the most annoying thing when you find out because you'd never expect it to happen. But there's a line of fire down here. So um, the way you can deal with that is by getting up to these buildings. You can see the TVP did just that. Uh, and basically this, I'll show you, this right here provides cover from campers over here. So, you know, th this is just my perspective. I'm not <laughs> trying to insult anyone or anything, but, uh, you know, some people might take it as such. But really, I think uh, the majority of the people like watching these kind of replays, so I have no problem featuring them. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the bit of foreshadowing <laughs> with the 15-0, uh, like where all our team went one side on steps and we still won. So that's going to be another replay because it's really, uh, fuck, I won't talk about it now. But anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.